Hello everyone, my name is Alex Gomez and on today's video I'm going to be sculpting an stylized female bust. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, like, comment and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video every Friday. So let's get started guys. So I created this character based on Rodeska and Dimit the art of Rodeska and Dimitri uh, Bagheda. I uh, really love their style and I want to apply that style as well into my own so kind of like I started uh, mixing that's that's what a style is like you mix a bunch of different influences that you have and create your own and I'm obviously in the process of doing that so I started with a polysphere a poly, poly, and I just make a, a poly mesh 3d I start getting the block out of the skull, pretty much uh, how the shape of the head goes. And I change the icon that you can see right in the top right corner of my ZBrush to the skull instead of the face planes. I find that the fa face plane doesn't have like a, the proper representation where the bone structure is. So which that I use that a lot when I'm doing uh, the block out uh, part of the head so as you can see I have a better representation where the cheekbones go where the orbital uh, bones or cavities are so I find that much better to do. then I roughly created the ears just to have a, a sense where are they located uh, what distance to the eyes are gonna be so as you can see, they're gonna be pretty much where it connects to the head. Uh, the ear goes straight right at the same distance as the eye. And then I just create just the neck. And it's very rough, re really rough uh, uh, block out at this point of, uh, of the workflow and the project. And this is very low uh, geometry as well. I work a little bit on the nose, kind of like a, a, giving it a little bit of shape, obviously without getting into any any details. Just kind of like a, to start working on on the uh, where everything is is located, same as the mouth. I kind of like a dig a hole into the mouth just to make it separate and, and make it easier to create uh, the lips on it. So I can kind of like a. After that, you start a uh, siri, uh, no siri, yeah, siri meshing uh, to to get a little bit uh, of geometry. This kind of was a little bit different workflow that I'm normally used to do. That I always work with Dynamesh. I was just working just with uh, with a siri mesh version of, of of that skull the whole time. And this is uh, one important thing that I learned from Rodesca's video was to add uh, uh, like that part of the bone, below the bone, and upper eyelid. Yeah, I always have a, a hard time kind of like getting that right. So I decided to follow his uh, tutorial and his technique and and definitely it's been working out this is my third character that i do it like that just adding that piece of geometry there and definitely it makes a big difference on your character's uh, eyes so after i'm done with that i just like a duplicate it and, and and get it in the into the other side as you see like my eyelids are really rough there i don't care i will work on them after and um, yeah, as I always say, like add some color to your sculpts. Uh, add uh, as soon as you have like a, kind of like a, the main features done, start adding some uh, eyelashes, eyebrows, and you can add like a temporary hair because it, 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 it makes a big difference. And, and you can notice that uh, character with hair uh, kind of like a, you can see it much better where you're going for. For the eyelids, I just uh, did, um, instead of uh, extracting, I just created a, a, a sub tool, just added a sub tool as sphere, and I just did a bend curve tool. 
which is really good to use like it's, it's very useful you can just scale down every single point or that's kind of like the resolution of the of the curve you can scale it down you can twist it you can um, increase the resolution so it's, uh, it's it's an amazing tool to do kind of like uh, things like that and also i use it a lot a lot a lot to do hair i always say that in my videos and then when you're done you just play the subset and it's just gonna uh, keep the form that you that you had then i work a little bit more on my ears kind of like give them a little bit more of a of a proper shape and uh, as you can see i just have like a high resolution of my of my face or head but not on on the ears but then i kind of like a subdivide the ears and subdivide for example the eyelids and then i dynamesh all together so i work in the eyebrows more i kind of like i like the thin eyebrows and uh, kind of like giving the same shape around the the orbital bone Then I, I kind of like speed up this process because it's pretty much the same technique that I always use with the, I create a sub tool and then I do use the bend curve just to create all the other parts of the hair. So that's all that you can see here. I add some color as well just to start seeing uh, the differences here. So in, that, in, in this case of the back of the head, you can just uh, add a, a sphere or you can just uh, mask it and extract that piece. Like I sometimes, I don't know, it depends. Sometimes I do one or, or other technique. It doesn't affect me too much, but, but yeah. And sometimes when I have like a different uh, kind of um, strands of hair like a big strands of hair I, I just kind of like duplicate them move them and just uh, shape them with a move brush but I just shape them when with my brush when it uh, has a, a, a bigger size so it's a little bit easier and this is for the eyes for the eyes is a very simple technique to use I just uh, yeah, use my divide my my sp uh, polysphere divide a bunch of time so I can get like a good resolution for, the, for when I paint in the eyes and I add a little of a different tones of for example here in purple I ended up changing to red after but but you're gonna see that I kind of like, like to move the eyes sometimes just to give a little bit more of an expression to it to the character then I move on to doing the shoulders and so everything, uh, mostly everything that I do is with a, a polysphere. So just append polyspheres and then just manipulate them and kind of like blocking out and then dynamesh and bring everything together. I think it's pretty easy to, to do and, um, and yeah, the same. So uh, what I totally recommend is you guys to grab kind of like an anatomy book or anatomy references it just works so good when you have your anatomy and if you're working for example in a bust if you're working on the chest on the shoulders uh, having those reference and identifying how the muscles are connected or how everything is proportionate it, it makes a big difference uh, in the creation of your character so i definitely recommend that you guys uh, grab one of those books uh, Anat uh, anatomy for sculptors and uh, it's a really good one uh, actually that's the one i have and it, it, it's really good like a really really good uh, resource for you guys to not to learn the proper terminologies of anatomy but kind of like to learn where or why things go in that way in, in the human body and if you're doing like an stylized and cartoonish stuff style like me you can just uh, probably like exaggerate a little bit more of those of those um, uh, features of the body but you know keep in mind that they, they should keep the same proportion of the you know it's gonna look funny then I dynamic kind of like the shirt and um, and I added a little bit of other strands in the head af afterwards 
uh, so very small strands which is gonna give a little bit more of appealing to this character so definitely this is a different workflow that than the one that I'm used to uh, definitely I'm gonna apply some things that I learned from it and if you like this video please share like subscribe if you haven't done so and uh, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post a video every Friday hope you guys have an amazing weekend don't forget to watch my other two videos right here and take care keep creating and keep safe guys Take care and see you next Friday. Bye.